Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Here to talk to you today about The Artist's Way and chapter one of The Artist's Way, which is one of my favorite books ever. If you are not familiar with it, here it is. It's The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. You can see my copy is well worn <laughs> and I have all my little notes of the different exercises in the top of it. So I decided to make a video about this because this book was given to me some years ago by a very good friend of mine who is a really good musician and she she kind of she knew I needed this book basically so she gave it to me and it was one of the best gifts I've ever been given um absolutely fantastic so what this book is is an 11 week course in regaining uh, your creativity so but also, I was talking to my housemate about this earlier today. This is the book that taught me how to self-care. This is the book that taught me how to make space for myself and how to value myself. So really, this book is not just for people who are looking to grow their creativity. It's for anyone who's looking for a bit of a spark or a bit of something deeper in their life. So this book, like I said, is 11 weeks. So it breaks into one or two introductory chapters and then 11 chapters. And um, the idea is that you do a chapter a week. Now, the first time I did this book, and it totally changed my life, um, I was pretty good at sticking to all the processes I got through the 11 weeks and I was in really, I was in a good way. Um, and that, but that was a good while ago and I'm really feeling the need to go through the learning this course has to offer again and that's okay you know I think I think life comes at us in cycles and we learn different things at different stages of our life and we need new processing tools or to revisit older processing tools um, at different times and I think that's kind of it's one of the good principles that I think religious structure has to offer I know the hierarchies of religions and stuff are hotly contested as they should be um, you know, hierarchy within spiritual organizations, yeah, very much to be questioned. There's a lot to say there, but some of the processes that religions have set up are good. And one of those things is the idea of having a weekly worship or a weekly time when you come together as a community to look at bigger principles, to look at bigger things. So I don't feel like, you know, oh, I did the course once and now I need it again. Like, I'm a different person than I was when I did this, like, I don't know, six, seven years ago. Um. And I need it again, so I'm doing it again. So this, just to show you the book again, I would encourage you to Google this right now and put my tea down. Woo. Um, have a look for it online if you don't already own a copy. And let's get stuck into it. So I'm really excited. Um, I want to do this with you guys because I want to be doing this with people. So... I'm going to talk about the basic principles of the book right now and just a very quick, like, go through some of the concepts. Um, reason number one is I don't want to detract anything from Julia Cameron herself. I do think you guys should go out and buy this book. She also has a video course for it online, but I think that's like $149, whereas this will cost you 30 quid. Um, so this is the cheaper option. And um, because this book has lots of tasks in it and lists and things, I often find it's nicer to have a book where you can go back and see the list um, when you need to, rather than like a Kindle where you're kind of clicking or, you know, I just prefer the book format for this kind of stuff. So let's get stuck in. Um, I'm so excited to be doing this with, with like other people. It's just such a fantastic, life-changing, game-changing book. So she is a writer. Um, she's a poet, she's a playwright, She, I think she writes fiction as well. Some of her poems are really, really nice actually. Um, all around creative lady and from what I can remember, uh, she, when she was a young woman in Hollywood writing, I think scripts, uh, she fell into alcoholic patterns and was very much relying on alcohol to be her opening guiding thing to help her access her creativity of course she realized thankfully she realized that this process of you know falling on the stereotype of the drunken artist was or like you know that artists drink a lot or that kind of thing that this was killing her and it wasn't serving her and you know that there had to be a more sustainable way to make work and make artistic work 
So, um, yeah, so this, there's a couple of basic things that she goes through on this that you need to know about. So first of all, this is a spiritual text, I think. Um, to me, it's a spiritual text because it feeds my soul. So if something's feeding your soul, it's of the spirit. Um, she uses the word God, but in the text, she actively encourages you to choose a different word if you want. So you might choose the word universe. You might choose the term inner strength. Uh, you might choose the term internal wisdom. So tailor your experience of this book to what works for you. I mean, a lot of my spirituality is still rooted in a God concept, so I'm not uncomfortable with the word God as a rooting thing for my own spirituality, but you might choose to cross that word out and write in internal power or, you know, anything so that you can access the wisdom she's offering you. If you don't like the word God, don't use it. Find an alternative script that I put it in um, because there's so much good stuff in this. So, um, introduction, she tells you a bit about herself and her own journey. I have all these quotes underlined from the first time I did this, so nothing dies harder than a bad idea. Ooh, Julia, you're so wise. So she goes through some of her basic uh, principles here, and um, she talks about this process as being an induced spiritual experience. Um, and this is what you're setting out on when you're doing this book. So for Johnny and Jake who've just joined me, I'm talking about this book. It's called The Artist's Way. It's really, 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 really good. Total life changer. Um, so she is, she sets up a couple of basic principles. Now, I don't want to read too much from the book again because I think that you should have this. I think this is something you should own. But some of her basic principles include um, creativity is the natural order of life. Life is energy, pure creative energy, which is absolutely correct. I mean, we come to this world, we make things, we make children, we breathe in and out, we convert oxygen into carbon dioxide do you know what i mean we are in a constant process of creation as we grow um so that's true and energy is life uh, creative energy is life so you know we break down food but we turn it into energy we turn it into things that go on our red blood cells and go all through our body that is energy so you know energy is life and um, two there is an underlying indwelling creative force infusing all of life including ourselves I also believe that to be true. And I also believe that to be actually quite a scientific thing. We are all made up literally of the same stuff. Yep, getcha. So she has these basic principles that she wants you to kind of read and engage with. And even if you don't agree, just to let them percolate over time, slowly over time to see what value you can get for them. So she outlines those basic principles for you. She talks a little bit about her experience of teaching this stuff and what you can expect during your kind of creative recovery, as she calls it. She talks about um, withdrawal symptoms, actually, interestingly. Withdrawing ourselves from our negative thinking patterns and from ways that we used to do things that aren't serving us anymore. You know, you might actually experience some withdrawal symptoms while you're doing this course. That's normal. Um, she wants you to stop telling yourself it's too late. Stop waiting until you make enough money to do something you'd love. Preach, girl. Stop telling yourself, it's just my ego whenever you yearn for a more creative life. Stop telling yourself that dreams don't matter or that only the dreams that are sensible matter. Stop fearing that your family and friends will think you're crazy. Very simple. So she sets up a lot of these basic ideas in that first chapter. Then she goes into the basic tools. And they are your morning pages and your art states. Morning pages are the most amazing, life-changing, game-changing process. So morning pages are when you get up and first thing in the morning you reach for your fool's cap notebook and you write. Just write. It doesn't need to be, doesn't need to have punctuation. It doesn't need to be legible. It doesn't need to have correct grammar. It doesn't need to have correct spelling. You just write. You just write whatever comes out, you just let it be on the page. And that's a meditation in a way. But one of the things I like about it so much is if I meditate and I'm breathing and I'm trying to focus on my breath, I'm trying to take focus away from my thinking mind. Whereas with the morning pages, I am, mm, I'm looking at my thinking mind. I'm detaching from it and observing it. And I'm saying, what's swimming around in there unchecked? What are the patterns in my thinking that I'm not seeing? Because 
they're just the things that pop up for me. I'm not necessarily trying to figure out how often they pop up. Whereas with morning pages, because you're doing them every morning, you can see exactly how often you are thinking about that bag that you saw in the shop or that guy who didn't treat you the way you wanted to be treated. It just becomes unavoidable when you're looking at the words on the page or when you find yourself writing the same words um, or when you find yourself criticizing yourself with the same stuff over and over again. Like the first time I did this course, I discovered that um, I was beating myself up a lot about not getting things done quickly enough. And what I discovered was when I expressed something I wanted to do on the page, generally within two months it had happened or it was set up or ready or I had sent emails about it or whatever. So what I started to recognize was that I was moving, but I just wasn't moving quick enough for my ego, basically. Um, so it can show you a lot of value in the things that you're doing already, these morning pages. And um, she's got a lot more useful information to say about them and different people's experiences of them in the book. So I would encourage you to have a good read of that section. Um, then she talks about, so the morning pages are really important. Does she mention artist dates here? Yeah, the artist date. So this one I really struggle with. It's funny, I'm happy to give myself time to uh, journal and to meditate and to do a bit of yoga and sometimes not all of those things at the same time, often not all of those things at the same time because you know we don't all have unlimited amounts of time. Um, but the artist date is where once a week you take an hour and you go and do something entirely for yourself, on your own. No friends, no boyfriends, no kids, uh, no like person Skyping in on the call. You go and you do it on your own for yourself. And I struggled hugely when I was doing the course to do artist dates. And when I finished the course, the artist dates were the first thing to go. But it's a shame because as she, she has a fantastic way of putting it. I think she calls them embarrassingly gratifying. And they are. Like I remember the second artist date I brought myself on the ideas that I had, the sense of well-being I felt afterwards just disproportionate to the amount of time I had given myself. It was, it was crazy. So um, morning pages I think I'm going to be okay with. Artist dates, they're going to be my struggle. So they're one of the things I need to be really accountable for. Um, so yeah, it's a date with your artist, with your inner artist, with your inner child. Just the two of you. Um, and they're tricky. And she talks about, what's this one here? Yeah, she talks about filling the well. So when you are an artist, but even just if you're not an artist, if you're a teacher, if you work on a customer helpline, you're giving energy out all day. All day, you're giving it out. You're giving away your of your best, actually, often in these places. And when do you fill that energy back in? What feeds that energy back to you? So she talks a lot about filling the well is the analogy she uses. If you run the well dry, you can't get any more water out of it. If I run myself dry, I don't have any energy to give to an audience. I don't have any energy to give to my own creativity. Of course I don't, because I haven't taken the time to stock up and to replenish the well. So this is a really important concept in this book. And um, she has quite a few good thoughts and ideas on that as well. So that is, those are her basic principles that she kind of just sets up. So we're now in theory set up <laughs> for this course. And um, she has a contract as well that she wants you to sign. So I recommend you doing that. Also, it's another reason why having the book is just better. You can write in your own notes. Um, you have things like that contract. Let me show you. Um, there, you can see it there on the page. Um, yeah. So every week she picks a different idea and uh, a different like theme or kind of place that she wants you to occupy for a week. And week one is about recovering a, se a sense of safety. So just from her little blurb on this week. This week initiates your creative recovery. You may feel both giddy and defiant, hopeful and skeptical. It's okay if you're skeptical, it's all right. The readings, tasks and exercises aim at allowing you to establish a sense of safety, which will enable you to explore your creativity with less fear.
So she has a couple of absolutely just like, there's so much wisdom in this book, guys. It's just so wise. She has the concept of shadow artists. So there's a lot of people that we know and that you know and that I know who surround themselves with artists and all their mates play 10 instruments or are bloggers or writers or painters or sculptors um, or running their own business. And like, you know, they're the only person with a desk job <laughs> out of the lot. And you find actually that a lot of times these people are quite creative, but they just haven't allowed themselves a creative identity. So she addresses that idea here really amazingly. Um, and then she talks about just being aware of self-talk. So she does that across two different sections, uh, which is where she talks about negative core beliefs and then um, talking about getting some affirmation set up. And guys, I can't stress enough how important those sections are and how important it is to sit down and read through those sections because we really get like very skeptical and suddenly very negative when someone tries to ask us to analyze our negative core beliefs. We suddenly get too busy. We suddenly get, uh, you know, we fall into bitching about it or moaning about it or whinging about it or we just find something else to do, anything but analyze what's in there. Um, and she talks about addressing that in a couple of different ways. And uh, one of the ways she talks about doing that is to do some affirmations. So she has a suggestion, which I use over and over again with friends of mine that I know aren't in a great place or that need little help. I suggest this exercise over and over again, where um, she gets you to figure out what the negative thoughts are. She gives you a really good framework for doing it. You figure out what the negative thoughts are and then you... Um, you write affirmations to directly counter those negative thoughts. That is so powerful, guys. It's just so powerful. And she also gives you a big list of affirmations that you can use yourself if you just can't get it done. You know, there's room for everyone here. And then she has tasks. The tasks are really fun. So the tasks are the morning pages. Now, I don't think, I don't think she expects you to do every single task every single week. I mean, that's down to your own time, but doing as many of them as you can is really beneficial so um yeah i won't read them all out here and i i'd be wary of reading too much out to you over this first of all because i take anything away from what this woman is due in terms of you interacting with her words directly and um, i also think that she writes very poignantly and very wisely and as a writer i think experiencing her spirit through this is really um important so do get a copy of this book for yourself. Um, so she does check-ins. So what I'm planning to do over the course of this, um, this, uh, this journey this time around is if any of you guys want to do this with me, um, I'm going to set up, I think, a little discussion group. And every Sunday, I'm going to do, there's a check-in. So there's a weekly check-in to see how you're getting on with stuff. So she'll ask you, you know, um, how, she asks you through questions, basically, how are your pages? How's your artist date? And what else sort of came up for you that week? And that's, that's also really important, that check-in. So what I'm thinking is we might do a check-in. So next week will be a check-in for week one and the week after a check-in for week two for any of you guys who want to participate and chat about it. Um, so I will find a link to this book for you guys on Amazon and encourage you, like cannot recommend enough what a worthwhile investment it is. Um, because she just, she's just so, um, she's so wonderful and this book is so precious. It's just one of the best things ever. So it's The Artist Way by Julia Cameron. And, um, I will set up a little playlist on my video here for this experience so um, do make sure that you're following my page and that you're keeping an eye out for my videos coming up. I'll also put them up on my YouTube. And um, if you want to hit subscribe and then there's a little bell, if you want to hit the little bell, you'll get an email every time I add a video there. So in the meantime, um, happy hunting with this book. I'm going to head off right now and go back through the basic principles. My housemate's going to do it with me as well. So we're going to do this part together. I'm going to go through the basic principles and going to get started, basically make a plan to get started because I really want the things that I know this journey is going to give to me. And um, I think that they, 
just some of the stuff you're going to encounter about yourself doing this are just beyond what I can tell you. So, um, the artist way, Julia Cameron, week one. Let us begin. Um, and I hope that you guys have a really good experience with your first week doing this book. I hope that I have a good experience getting back into it again. If you are also a repeater, <laughs> um, I hope that you find new things this time around, fresh energy. And I will chat to you guys again next Sunday for our week one check-in. Okay, bye.